What is up everybody? It is Wick here and we're about to go over some Christmas items you can pick up in the wild. Garage sales, estate sales, even thrift stores make some money. I recently done a Halloween video like this. I got some requests to do a Christmas one, so we're going to focus on that. We're going to focus on the keyword vintage because that's where most of the money is. Let's just jump right into it and talk about blow molds first because that's some of the best stuff you can pick up in my opinion. A lot of the good stuff is rare. Uh, but it's more common than a lot of the super rare stuff that you can make a lot of money. Here's a blow mold Santa and reindeer. And this thing sold for $2,700. Seems like it's in amazing condition, but you don't have to focus on stuff like this. This one's going to be more rare. You can see it was sold locally. They didn't ship this. The names to look out for, uh, I would say probably number one is Empire. Made a lot of this stuff in the 60s. I was complaining last video that I never find good blow molds where I've Recently found one, an Empire Blow Mold, and that's gonna be in a future video. Um, I don't have that one edited yet. So make sure you're subscribed so you can catch that. It was an amazing find. Some of these prices are a little suspicious, like this Empire Blow Mold Wreath sold for $4,750 with 26 bids. Maybe I'm missing something, but similar Empire Wreaths like this, you know, they sell for $150, $200 max. Maybe it's because this one has some toes in the picture there. Be very careful when you're taking photos for eBay, especially if you do it nude. You'd be surprised what causes reflections and what people will end up seeing. Honestly, if my foot was in this photo, I think I would just retake it, but you know, maybe that's what made it sell for so high. Uh, I've mentioned in the last video that some of these prices can be inflated. You just have to do your research and make sure that you know, the, all the comps are similar, but most certainly keep an eye out for those vintage blow molds, especially Empire. Look for that Empire sticker. The name's usually engraved in the back with a date. They're pretty easy to spot. Of course, there's Christmas toys, antique German Christmas Santa Claus riding a polar bear. I thought this was amazing uh, just because it's so bizarre, right? It's almost like a meme or something. A lot of people want these vintage Christmas trees, certain ones. You got this, what is it, Revless? stainless steel gold and silver Christmas tree. That name, some of these models, some of these styles are selling for quite a bit of money. Just like these aluminum Christmas trees as well. You see this one actually revolves kind of like those Fantasia lamps. I recently picked up one of those, had it in a video, about a $400 lamp that just fiber optic that spins. Nativity sets, again, just, it just depends on the name. You can see the name there. Stuff that you find that says made in China, probably not gonna be worth picking up. If it's made in Italy, Germany, even Japan, United States, some of this stuff, it can be great money. It's easy to research this stuff. So when you come across it, you see a name on the back, you see where it's made, just look it up. It could be worth quite a bit of money. I don't know what this one exactly sold for since it was a best offer. Christmas ornaments. It's strange that I rarely seem to come across just loose, smaller ornaments at thrift stores, especially Goodwill, since I hit a lot of Goodwills. You just never see them there. I don't know why, at least my Goodwill, you think they just hang them on peg hooks or set up a Christmas tree display and just hang a bunch of them on the tree and charge $2 an ornament. People can go through and buy them. Just seems like a missed opportunity. But these right here, uh, Swarovski, I guess is how you pronounce that, maybe. Some of these were selling well into the thousands, uh, this 1991 holiday. Even some of the lower ends, you can still get 25, 50 bucks for few hundred dollars on some of them. Just look for that name. Remember that name. They all kind of look the same. They look kind of like snowflakes so you can see what it looks like there. Little things like this 35 millimeter classic vintage 1944 white Christmas movie. Uh, yeah I, I don't know if that's the true value or what the true value is. Another best offer kind of thing but some of these classic movies uh, 35 millimeter are desirable especially the Christmas stuff. Here's a Harold Gale Mrs. Santa mechanical store display I thought was pretty cool. Sold for $1,500 and it looks pretty cool. Again, in this video, we're just going over some of the, you know, big name stuff. Obviously, there's plenty of vintage stuff like this. Smaller items that you can pick up, sell for $20, $30. Most of the seasoned resellers, they're gonna know all this, but some of you people who may be new to selling or new to this kind of thing might be kind of shocked at some of these prices. String lights, vintage. People like the vintage stuff. I don't know how many times I can say it. Uh, they want to decorate their whole house in authentic vintage items. String lights like this, certain lights, certain displays, they're just hard to find. They get broken, they get damaged, they get lost over the years. 
it's gonna be pretty easy to go to a sale and just come across a box of something like this. I can see right there on the plug, it says made in Italy. I don't know the significance of that. It just pays to research this kind of stuff because you never know what it might be worth. And here is something creepy. <laughs> it just looks very scary to me. Uh, Harold Gale, Christmas Glitter Snow Baby Window. Uh, a lot of these were selling, a lot of them in the thousand dollar range. You see it's just a little store display, I guess it was, for some sort of Christmas item. Here's a 1948 Parker's Brother Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer board game. You know, it's showing here on eBay. Oh, this is very clean for the age. It's showing it sold for over a thousand dollars, so pretty nice board game pickup, I would say. Here's another very creepy Mrs. Santa Claus, Marsha Backstrom. Private collection, miniature dollhouse, Mr. Santa. Oh, that's a Mr. No beard. It looks like the beard fell off. It's down there, I guess. Um, I don't know. I guess you could have glued that back on or just wanted to keep it authentic. I guess it's both of them, right? I, I don't know. That face just doesn't say Christmas to me. And here's the kind of stuff I'm pretty interested in. This is the kind of thing I would put on my mantle as a display piece. A lot of people want to put art up, maybe a nice vase. But you know what? This vintage talk boy from Home Alone in the box. You can see the value of these things. I think they're just awesome. Of course, Home Alone is symbiotic with Christmas at this point. Of course, I like vintage Empire blow molds for decoration, but this kind of stuff just really cool to me. Talk Boy, uh, if you find this kind of stuff, we've mentioned before the Sony Walkmans that you see in Guardians of the Galaxy, that model. Certain models of vintage things that are in movies can be worth quite a bit. People want them. I think I had one of these actually as a kid or maybe it was my friend, I don't remember at this point, but uh, keep an eye out for this kind of stuff. You can sell it with keywords like Christmas because people are looking for that kind of stuff, especially for gifts. They wanna give this kind of stuff as gifts to people. So some of these German Christmas decorations are pretty creepy. A lot of them are holding great value. So just even this, like you might not even see it in the, the Christmas section because it doesn't really scream Christmas. I know a lot of this German stuff, you know, you're probably not going to find, at least in the United States, very easily. I don't know the history on how much of this stuff made it over to this side of the world, but uh, I'm keeping an eye out for it because I want to make that money. Vintage toy catalogs, even some of the 90s, like Sears, JCPenney stuff that I looked at as a kid, some of those can sell for decent money, especially if you're picking them up, you know, in the trash or at, maybe at a yard sale for a quarter or something. A lot of people don't put those out to sell because they don't think they're worth anything. But here's one from 1911 toy catalog, trains, Lionel dolls. Very cool, very collectible. You could find this in a drawer at an estate sale. You just never know. Norcrest, Japanese snowman. Again, just look at this. Like, I wish I could find something this cool out in the wild. Salt and pepper shakers sold for $780. Norcrest, good name to look out for, for figurines and stuff like that. I'm learning, I've been paying a lot more attention to figurines because you don't want to just walk past something like this at a garage sale, right? Something that's worth about 800 bucks. I'm not sure the significance of these Coleman Christmas lanterns from 1951, but people are using the name Christmas. I don't know if because they're green and red or if they actually have some sort of meaning with Christmas. So you can let me know in the comments if you know anything about them. But of course, vintage Coleman lanterns, they do well on their own. You tie in Christmas with it, that just increases the value. Here's a vintage How the Grinch Stole Christmas book. Again, best offer. Don't know how much this one actually sold for, but I can guarantee you if you find this kind of stuff, it's worth picking up, even if you're only getting it $50, $60 for it, right? Because you're probably picking it up for two or three dollars max. Here's a cool little vintage Christmas motion lamp, Christmas lamps, anything unique like this, gonna be great. A lot of these vintage ceramic Christmas trees, like tabletop Christmas trees, good money. Actually, last week I went into a Goodwill and there was a lady pushing around a cart that had one of these. It looked to be old. Uh, I don't know if how much it would have been worth, if there was a name on it or whatever. Uh, she looked pretty happy that it was in her cart, so I'd imagine it was pretty nice. Items like this, when they hit a Goodwill shelves, um, they're gone almost instantly. There's so many people that look for this stuff. Got a vintage Christmas punch set here, some mugs, some a bowl, pretty unique looking, pretty easy to spot, right? Something like this. There is a lot of money in vintage Christmas sweaters. The uglier, the better. There's ugly Christmas sweater parties and people look for the most unique, the most crazy items. Many of these items you can pick up at thrift stores for a dollar or two. 
and you can sell them anywhere between $20 and $50 a piece. Then there's some special ones like this Michael Simon that people will pay up a bit more for, some Ralph Lauren stuff that's vintage. I'm not a huge clothing reseller, uh, but if I was, I'd be hitting these smaller thrift stores around Christmas when they put out all these ugly sweaters. And you can get them for a dollar and flip them for $20, $30 a piece. It just really adds up. Don't forget about the vintage Christmas cards as well. Another vintage item. Of course, there's more stuff than vintage. This video is focusing more on that kind of stuff. I can't go over all the, the Christmas items that are worth money. There's so many that are just worth $10, $20. $30 on their own that will sell like cookie cutters and stuff like that. But Christmas cards, 60 vintage Christmas cards. Again, it's just so easy to go to an estate sale or a garage sale and somebody just have a bunch of cards like this in a box they're getting rid of for a dollar or two and you can make some great money on it. You got the Christmas village stuff. Some of that is worth a lot of money. Department 56, I think I got quite a bit of these. Department 56 things I got on a Salvation Army pallet. I'm pretty sure I looked up most of them and they weren't worth this much. So I don't know what you know makes some of these worth more. You can see the Grinch here and that's just a figurine. Department 56 went for over $4,000. You got some National Lampoon Christmas Vacation stuff. Again, some of these prices, you know, they may be inflated a bit. Here's a whole collection, 56 for $2,800. Yeah, it really looks like this National Lampoon stuff is pretty good if you used to come across that out in the wild. But you can just see here all kinds of items. Looks like they got some Grinch stuff, how the Grinch sold Christmas, city, post office, village, tree, all that kind of stuff. Just, yeah, always flip over the bottom of these things when you find them. See if they have a name and just do a search. Sort by, you know, what they're, what's sold and see if you can make any money on this stuff. Then, of course, you got the vintage Christmas stockings. You can't forget about those. Again, you can find these very cheap. And let's just scroll here and take a look. Ninja Turtles, that's just awesome. I would love to have those vintage Ninja Turtles stockings. Very cool. Even showing a lot of blow molds since I did a, a search for Christmas stockings, Santa holding a stocking. Here's a cross stitch, something that was a cross stitch set. Some of this, um, what is it, Busilla brand. I've sold some Christmas stockings like this for about a hundred bucks. So you can definitely make money on these kind of items. There it is, everybody. I just wanted to go over some of these vintage Christmas items. Got some requests to do the video. It was fun looking at this stuff. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you were entertained. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button for me on the way out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Always new videos of all kinds of awesome things you can look for in the wild. I always go thrifting. I find some really cool things that, you know, you might want to know about. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, flipping underscore junk. And this has been Wick. Till next time.